My name is Eric Nguyen, and my paper was on the potential of a stem cell-based therapy to reverse neurodegeneration from spinal muscular atrophy. So as a background, spinal muscular atrophy, called SMA for short, is a devastating neurodegenerative disease that's caused by the missing SMN1 gene. This results in a lack of the SMN protein, which is vital for the survival of motor neurons. As a result of the lack of it, um, motor neurons become degenerated and undergo death. While current treatments of SMA can stop degeneration, they're unable to restore motor function. Neurons do not have a regenerative capacity, so once they're lost, they're gone forever. Um, the high cost of these treatments make early intervention difficult. Early intervention can actually save the majority of motor neurons and thus lead to people um, having a normal life. But as an example, Spinraza is one of the main three drugs for SMA. It costs $750,000 for the first year and $350,000 after that. Thus, there's a limited window for intervention that many families are not able to actually afford. Um, a stem cell or stem cell based therapy offers the potential to replace lost motor neurons in SMA and thus restore motor function in a way that's not yet possible. So, my area of investigation was stem cell based therapy for a neurodegenerative disease, specifically SMA. Um, so, I set out to answer what is the potential of stem cell treatment and how close is it to becoming a realistic possibility? If not, what currently prevents it from being so? Thus, I wanted to explain the biological phenomenon behind its effectiveness and current challenges in its application. Um, so neural stem cells are stem cells that are committed to a neural lineage, which means that they can differentiate into cells within the central nervous system, or CNS. This includes glial cells, such as astrocytes and microglia, and of course, neurons. Transplantation involving these cells can create a therapeutic effect through the release of neurotrophic factors, cell replacement, and reduce neuroinflammation. In two studies where neural stem cells were injected into um, SMA mice models, this was indeed showed to be the case. Um, mice showed increased survival time and increased motor function. However, there was only a small percentage of um, neural stem cells that differentiated into motor neurons. This means that the main um, acid of therapeutic effect was caused by neural protection and support. This is because in the adult CNS, Gliogenesis is favored over neurogenesis, meaning that motor neuron differenti differentiation is limited once NSCs are within the spinal cord. This serves to be a problem since SMA is characterized as a disease primarily of motor neuron and motor function loss. Thus, a greater emphasis on motor neuron replacement is necessary. Unfortunately, NSCs can be further differentiated into motor neurons. They can be cloned in vitro and then directly injected, a method that has also shown success in an SMA mice model. In this experiment, induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPSCs, from SMA patients were differentiated into motor neurons and also genetically corrected. This in itself represents a major milestone for patient-specific treatment, since transplanting your own cells reduces the risk of a foreign invader immune response from the body. And as previously discussed, this experiment also showed increased lifespan and increased motor function. However, there are still various challenges that remain to be overcome for the full benefit of a stem cell therapy. These include limited cell engraftment and axon extension. For instance, out of 20,000 transplanted motor neurons derived from genetically corrected iPSD in an SMA mice model, only 3,800 were detectable at the end stage of disease. This may not be a problem in small animals where this number still made up a large majority of, I mean, a large percentage of total motor neurons. Um, this could serve as an issue when transplanting into larger animals that require larger cell quantities for replacements. Additionally, there's also limited axon extension. Only a few, if any, motor neurons were actually able to connect through to the endogenous neural circuits through the ventral roots. As a result, new brain-body connections cannot be formed with muscles, and thus restorative motor function is limited. As a literature review, both primary research studies and explanatory articles were utilized through Google Scholar and other sources. I learned that stem cell treatment can indeed be effective in the disease amelioration of SMA. However, as discussed previously, there are engraftment issues and problems with muscle innervation. Motor neurons have to be um, injected through direct intraparenchymal injection, which leads to more adverse side effects and more in, um, inflammation. However, there are potential solutions to the issues um, aforementioned. 
One of these is reducing inflammatory glial signals through SMN protein correction. The microenvironment in um, an SMA spinal cord is definitely neurotoxic, and this can limit the ability of supportive cells, such as astrocytes, to help motor neuron survival. This plays a large part. Um, this is sorry. This is caused mainly because while SMN protein is um, selectively impacts motor neurons, it is actually um, expressed throughout the body. Thus, glial cells such as astrocytes can have impaired um, function, and this results in exogenous cells being unable to survive in such conditions. However, um, using SMN protein correction could fix the problems associated with this and lead to a better environment for engraftment. Um, in the case of axon growth, there are, um, there are solutions such as using Rolipram. This has been able, um, in an experiment done from an SMR model mice, which is similar to um, SMA in which motor neurons are also degenerated, it was able to enhance axon elongation when placed with a stem cell treatment. Um, in the top, the top picture shows this, where the green shows donor motor neuron axons, while the bright orange shows um, neuromuscular junction formations through with molecules um, specific, specifically expressed by them. Here you can see um, a direct Im visual image of the effect of neural stem cell treatment as the treated group um, displays a better phenotype than the untreated group. In conclusion, um, though stem cell treatment possesses a novel clinical significance for neural regeneration, um, the prospect of an effective therapy based on it remains in the future. Along with the challenges discussed, it's important to note that only mice models have been utilized in stem cell research for SMA. Thus, when using larger animals or humans, there could be other problems that arise. Supportive treatment is definitely necessary to resolve transplantation issues, but further research is needed for their optimization. My research has been able to um, summarize the development of stem cell therapy for reversing neurodegeneration um, from spinal muscular atrophy. Um, it analyzes potential issues in the treatment for, from reaching its full therapeutic potential, and thus, by um, discussing solutions, identifies further areas of research for increased efficacy. Lastly, I wanted to talk about my experience with gifted GABR. Both Dr. Barkey and Professor um, Virgil helped me by providing invaluable support during the paper's development. Dr. Varghi helped me find critical research sources related to motor neurons, while Professor Virgil helped me with APA formatting and fixing my paper for um, research journal expectations. When I first tackled the notion of writing a research paper, especially on this complex topic of stem cells, I was very overwhelmed. But through this program, um, I was able to break the process down into more manageable pieces, helping me to ultimately finish my paper. Without gifted Gabber, I would have neither the support nor motivation necessary to complete my literary review. Thanks to them, I've been able to expand my knowledge in the captivating field of regenerative medicine. Excellent. You can stop. Uh, uh, yeah, great job, Derek. Very nice presentation and topic. Uh, Dr. Warki. Uh, Derek, very good uh, focused uh, presentation. Uh, I like that. And uh, uh, also, like just a question to you. So, this SMA gene, does it, uh, or SMN1 gene, does it have like, uh, like how is, what's the genetics behind that? Like, is it like, uh, it to be homozygous or heterozygous for it to be effective? It's homozygous. But actually, okay. there's another backup gene called, called the SMN2 gene. If a person has more of that gene, then they can actually have less effects from having SMA. But if they don't, then they'll have a more severe type. So SMN2 basically compensate for SMN1. Yeah, but the um, amount of SMN protein it produces is actually insufficient because it's uh -huh. specifically made to produce incorrect ones. So like only 10% okay. of the time will it actually produce correct SMN protein. Okay, okay. Good job, uh, Derek. Continue to uh, find your knowledge in the this particular area, regeneration and uh, regenerative medicine, whatever uh, eventually you want to focus on. That's just for the future. Thank you.